can't we just get beyond tick rate? Valve has enforced 64 tick consistency when running Counter-Strike 2 servers, meaning face it is now 64 tick, 128 tick is officially dead. I think it's better, it's more helpful if they let us run servers how we please. If 128 tick is superfluous with sub tick, let us figure that out for ourselves through testing. There are a lot of smart and talented people currently messing around with Counter-Strike 2. They can be an asset. There are also a lot of dummies. Unfortunately, the dummies tend to be louder. I think Valve hard-coded 64 tick temporarily as they test the game because they want to make sure all the data they get is consistent. The reason why they hard-coded it is because people who were running 128 tick servers did so using methods that Valve did not want them to use. The term hacking is thrown around a lot these days. The definition is very broad. So you can see why Valve did that. If someone's gonna mess with my code, I'm gonna slap them. To understand all this stuff, we first have to understand what what tick rate is. Put simply, tick rate is the number of times per second that the game state is updated. What? This is called the game loop. Input is processed, calculations are done, and the new game state is sent out. The game state is all the information of what is going on in the game, where your player is, where the other players are, where your players look, and everything. It's a snapshot of the game. If a server has a tick rate of 64, that means the game state is updated 64 times a second, or once every 16 milliseconds. This is what happens when you don't have a tick rate. See, Bethesda don't know how to program good. They tied the physics engine to the frame rate and then just locked the frame rate. It's a much better practice to tie any game loop to time, because time is a constant. Well, it's not, but it's close enough. Counter-Strike is a multiplayer game that uses the client-server architecture. The client is your computer. Every player has their own computer. They connect to a server where the game state is kept. What you see on your computer is not the same as the game state, but it tries to be as close as possible so the game feels good. It also lies to you, but more on that later. When you do something in the game, like click to shoot, that information is sent to the server. The server then updates the game state and and sends out the update to every other client. So why 128 tick? Bigger number better, everybody knows that, but at a certain point, the betterness of bigger number isn't as better as something called diminishing returns. So where's the sweet spot? That sweet spot in Global Offensive is 128 tick. However, Valve decided to run the matchmaking servers at 64 tick. Their reasoning was that a lot of Counter-Strike players have crappy PCs and internet connections, and that 128 tick would actually negatively impact their experience. Plus it costs twice as much to run. We had a scenario where competitive Counter-Strike was played at 128 tick and casual at 64 tick. This is not good. The game behaves differently depending on the tick rate. It feels different. It's better if everybody played at the same tick rate under the same game rules. But Mr. War Owl, I hear you say, that's because the Valve servers are lower quality. The tick rate isn't important. It's true that the servers are lower quality, but it's also true that tick rate is significant significant to the gameplay experience, anyone telling you otherwise is wrong. I'm adding this segment into the video. As I'm rendering this, Natto Safinx uploaded a video where pro player Robs was able to tell the difference between 64 tick and 128 tick 100% of the time just by moving around. So checkmate, atheists. And that brings us to Counter-Strike 2, where Valve has unveiled a new technology they call Subtick, which aims to make 64 tick servers good enough. So what is subtick? Every time you perform an input, such as clicking to shoot an enemy, that input is timestamped, so that when it's sent to the server and the server updates the game state, it will have a very accurate idea of when that input happened. The server still has a tick rate. It's not tickless like some people were saying. That makes no sense. It just remembers where you were aiming at the exact moment you clicked instead of tying all of that to a server tick, like it did in Global Offensive. I'll make this bold claim because I'm pretty sure I'm right here. When it comes to processing player input, a CS2 64 tick server is more accurate and reliable by a lot than a Global Offensive 128 tick server. The negative to CS2 64 tick is in the feedback the player gets. I think this is a great idea, and I'm kind of shocked that it isn't the standard. I'm sure the technology is more complicated than that, but that's my simple understanding of of it. Does that mean we are beyond tick rate? If so, why not run servers at 32 tick? Or how about one tick? Obviously, the server tick rate still matters. At 64 tick, even though the inputs aren't limited to intervals, the server is still sending out the updated game state to everyone's computer 
once every 16 milliseconds. Under 128 tick, that's once every 8 milliseconds. And then your client has to make sense of the information and display it to you on the screen so that the illusion is not broken. Remember before when I said that what you see on your monitor is not the game state? Well, it can't be. It's impossible. There will always be a disconnect between client and server, so the client tries to be sneaky about it. One method to do this is something called interpolation. Interpolation as a concept is simply filling in the gaps. This is our data. We draw the line and we say, huh, where the data gonna be? Oh, it's probably gonna be right there. The data's where the player's moving. Oh, we smoothed it. Ha! I tricked you into learning. What you're seeing is not 100% what is happening, but it feels good. Anytime you become aware of the fact that what you're seeing is actually an illusion, it doesn't feel good. For example, have you ever been playing a video game and you died after you ran behind cover? Guess what? You weren't behind cover on the other guy's screen. This is fair, but it doesn't feel good. Peeker's Advantage is another example. If I run around the corner, I'm doing that before the game state updates and before that is sent to the other player. So I'm turning in the corner before the other guy sees me. The effect becomes worse the higher the latency is and the lower the tick rate is, but obviously the latency is more important here. Okay, I kind of screwed up here. I, I posted a little bit of misinformation on the internet. There was a popular Reddit post talking about the settings for interpolation. I tweeted it out. These are values on the client side that change how the interpolation calculations are running, except they actually weren't. It was complete placebo. The values did nothing, but we thought they did. In an update, Valve removed these variables from the dev console, so now we can't modify them anymore. This is why Valve thinks we're stupid. Now, I have a very good computer and I have a very good internet connection. I have not been having the problems that other people have been having with Counter-Strike 2. It feels great to me. I'm not saying there aren't problems. I'm not discounting what other people are saying. Maybe the tick rate isn't the problem this time, though. The only way to know that is to test and Valve has removed our ability to do that, which is both a Chad move and totally not cool because I'm on the other end of it. I'm still incredibly optimistic about Counter-Strike 2. Valve has proven that that they'll improve the game with incremental updates, and now on the Source 2 engine with a beautifully programmed game, they have the resources to do that. Even though I haven't posted in a month, it's got nothing to do with Counter-Strike, I'm just going through stuff. And I know what you're thinking, how could someone as talented and handsome and good at everything be going through stuff? Everybody goes through stuff, I, I, I'm gonna be okay. Certainly, simply doubling the resource costs to solve a technical problem is an inelegant solution but it works. Even though I found it funny, I don't like that they removed the ability to run them at 128 tick. It's not like an ostrich sticking its head into the sand. It's like a man grabbing an ostrich by the neck, shoving his head into the sand and going, shh, everything's okay, shh, it's okay. If the 128 tick is actually much better and the pro scene adopts it and competitive is all played on 128 tick and we have the split community again, how about a compromise? How about we take the premiere mode you made, which I really like, and we make that 128 tick and everything else can be 64 tick. Thanks for watching, I am the War Owl and I guess I'll see you Wednesday and I still have no closer.